Hi again, everyone. So this is the last presentation I'm going to upload for you guys. Um, and it's slightly different than the other presentations because rather than in a poster format like the other ones, this is a, a talk I gave, right? And a talk is another type of, here, let me turn around. It's another type of presentation we do in academia. Um, we present not only like, like posters like you guys, but we also give like real PowerPoint presentations to an audience of people. So rather than standing at a poster and having people come up, we give a presentation and have an audience there and then the audience can ask questions all at once. Um, I was really unfamiliar with this type of presentation until I got to graduate, or not graduate school, but until I got to um, undergraduate or uh, college basically, but um, it's just another type of presentation and the reason I'm doing it this way here is I don't have a poster for this project. Okay. But anyway, all background information you don't really care about. What is this work on? Okay, so this work is, and you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the research I'm presenting is in collaboration with experiments. So that's a lot of the work we do in my lab is collaborating with experimentalists to help them understand things that they're seeing experimentally, where they uh, you know, might have some reaction that they're studying, but they can't understand the exact atom to atom interactions, that's where we can really help. So this work is in studying this protein. So this is a protein called the ecdysin receptor. And this protein is responsible for stimulating development in uh, specific classes of um, species, so specific like species and whatnot. And it's, we are particularly looking at using it as a target for a drug treatment. Okay, so the, the disease we're trying to treat here is called lymphatic filariasis. And I'm going to go to the next uh, slide that has some images of people who are afflicted by this disease. So just to give you a warning, um, it's not too, like, kind of, it's not too gruesome, but I think showing that the those afflicted by it is important because it, it shows us exactly what the disease does. So lymphatic filariasis is also known as, if the clicker would go to the next slide, it would help me do what I need. Clicker's not going to the next slide. Have to click it manually. Okay, lymphatic filariasis is also known as elephantitis and it's characterized by extreme swelling in the lower legs. So you see this woman here has swelling here and um, this swelling, is the result of, again, gotta press the button here, <clears throat> is the result of infection by a filarial nematode called Brugia mali. So this is our, our nematode here. And what happens is this, this nematode enters the human body through a mosquito vector, right? So the mosquito bites us and transmits this nematode into the body and once it finds its way into the body, it then finds its way to the lymph nodes, which there are some lymph nodes here, but of course we also have the ones up near our throat up here. And the lymph nodes are responsible primarily for filtering, uh, you know, all the water and blood and uh, like filtering toxins out. But they also then re-filter water throughout the body. So they, they recycle water throughout the body. And as the lymph nodes become infected with the filarial parasite, they start to get clogged. And as a result, they can't filter and redistribute water throughout the body, which means water just sits in our tissues and then falls down to the lower extremities by gravity, resulting in, like what we saw, <clears throat> swelling in the lower legs, which is really unfortunate. And the problem is... The real problem is that the swelling can happen so quickly that then the skin tears and it creates cuts and abrasions. And unfortunately, this disease is what's known as a neglected tropical disease, meaning uh, it takes place, it's, it's endemic to tropical areas, and it <clears throat> affects people who unfortunately either you know don't have access to health care, but they also might not have access to clean water with which to clean those wounds, right? So this is a really... Um, detrimental disease and, and over a, a billion people on the planet are at risk of of contracting this disease. So we want to figure out how to treat this disease. Well, luckily, our collaborators have identified that you can actually bind a molecule. You can use this molecule here, 20-hydroxyic disone. And we actually saw this molecule in our P450 work, 
but um, you can bind this 20 hydroxy ecdysone to this protein called the ecdysone receptor. And when you do that, so basically you're taking this molecule and feeding it to this nematode. And when you do that, you kill the nematode, right? So not only do you kill the nematode, so any adult nematodes die, so that, that's what the circle means is we're stopping this process here, but you actually also cause adult female nematodes to prematurely expel all of their progeny. So they release all of their eggs, their embryos, and uh, microfilari, which are basically pre-developed um, filarial nematodes. So this results in killing adult nematodes and results in expel expulsion prematurely of eggs, embryos, and microfilari, which therefore results in treatment of the disease, okay? So these are our collaborators, our experimental collaborators at USF. And just some quick experimental results really quickly. This plot is showing the treatment of the disease by 20 hydroxyic disone. These are four gerbils. These four bars result, uh, reflect four gerbils who have lymphatic filariasis. So they have the parasite in their body. These two gerbils were control gerbils, so they were not treated with anything. These two gerbils were treated with 20 hydroxyic disone. And the, on the y-axis, we have the number of parasites recovered from the gerbil after the treatment period, right? So of course, the control gerbils weren't treated with anything, so we have about 30 parasites recovered from each of those gerbils. And for the two treated gerbils, um, we have no, for one of the gerbils, we have no adult parasites recovered. For the other, we have one adult parasite recovered, but actually that is not a healthy parasite. So if you look down here, this is a picture of a parasite recovered from a ger an untreated gerbil, so the controlled gerbil, and it, it's, the parasite itself extends the whole length of the Petri dish. Over here, we have a, uh, an adult parasite recovered from a treated gerbil, but the the parasite itself only extends about one or two inches. So this guy is thriving over here, no problems. And this guy is alive, but just barely, right? So this illustrates that we are treating the disease directly. And furthermore, over here, we have the concentration of eggs, eggs, embryos, and microfilari after treatment with 20 hydroxyic disone. And when you have, uh, so if you follow those blue lines, that shows you all of the eggs, embryos, and microfilari that result after treating the nematodes with 20 hydroxyic disone. And once again, I just want to emphasize that these are non viable progeny because they were expelled early, right? So this, this indicates that not only are we treating the individual, but we're preventing spread of the disease because adult parasites can't replicate. They're expelling their eggs, embryos, and microfilari early, and their progeny are non-viable. So we're treating the individual and we're treating the population, which is really cool. Now, of course, as I've emphasized, I'm not an experimental chemist, I'm a computational chemist. So what we did to um, kind of support this work is we constructed a virtual screening tool. Basically, we constructed a 3D structure of the ecdysone receptor, and we used that to identify more compounds that could serve as treatments for lymphatic filariasis. So uh, here is our, we had to do kind of a bit of a, a validation step, right? We wanted to make sure that our 3D virtual model could replicate the experimental results, and we were able to show that. So this is our virtual model, our 3D virtual model here, and all of these compounds are compounds that were experimentally identified to be, um, you know, potential treatments for lymphatic filariasis. So these experimentally bound to the ecdysone receptor, and then we also used docking studies to dock them into our virtual model, and we saw that they docked with predicted binding free energies that correlate very well to experimental binding free energies which is excellent. So that validates our, our computational model, meaning that we can now take it and try to find new compounds that <clears throat> could potentially serve as treatments for lymphatic filariasis, and that's what we did. So we used this model to, and there's a lot of details in here, but basically we used this model to identify 100 compounds from just the internet, really, that could potentially serve as treatments for lymphatic filariasis. And then through a couple of rounds of docking, we identified 25 that looked like really good potential um, lymphatic filariasis treatments. From those 25, 
four were commercially available, meaning you could go online and purchase them. So our experimental collaborators did, and out of those four, two experimentally bound, and that's these two that I've highlighted here. And uh, it's not th these other two, it's not that they didn't bind, but they disrupted the experimental assay. So these two were the only two to make it all the way through, but that's two out of four, and we still have 21 more that could potentially be treated or could potentially serve as treatments that we haven't investigated experimentally yet. So then there's still some ongoing work on this. Um, we're now taking a, a pharmaceutical database from a pharma pharmaceutical company, and they have tens of thousands of molecules, and we're screening these molecules through our virtual screening tool, and that means that we can filter out a lot of compounds much more quickly than than they could experimentally, and we're using a lot less computational, uh, not computational, experimental chemical waste and everything like this. So that's one of the benefits of this type of research. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, so I think that's all the work I wanted to present to everyone today. Um, I hope you guys aren't too bummed about missing your fare, and I hope maybe you can get a little bit of, you know, bad feeling out by at least presenting on this page and, you know, commenting on other people's work, and asking questions, or at the very least, I practiced some for my dissertation defense, so um, no matter what, it was worth it. Okay, happy self-isolation.